Since 1986, Jim Calhoun has transformed the Connecticut Huskies from NIT champions into the Big East's most successful program of the 90s. Six regular season titles, four tournament championships, seven trips to the Sweet 16, and a few classic buzzer beaters. But always seemingly ending one step shy of glory. Until last season. The champions begin their defense next. Most appropriate on the night that college basketball has its curtain rising, they do it on the largest stage in the world, New York City and Madison Square Garden. Inside, that's Khaled Alamine of the UConn Huskies. Defending national champions, Jake Goskell, the big guy in the middle, looking to make it two consecutive years. And they begin their defense tonight as the Huskies take on the Iowa Hawkeyes here at Madison Square Garden in the Coaches versus Cancer Icon Classic. If you missed the first game, you want to slap yourself because it was tremendous. Went into overtime. Nate James with a chance for Duke, down by one, launches a long three, maybe a little too early, on the money but off the front iron, and Stanford holds on for the win against Duke. Hello, everyone. John Saunders alongside Digger Faust. An unbelievable game to start the season. We'll talk more about that at halftime. Tonight's story, though, for UConn, though, was whether or not Khaled Elamine would be eligible to play for this game. There was some question whether or not he left tickets for someone they believe could be a booster. Well, we had Jim Calhoun on earlier. Obviously, he's playing tonight, which means UConn right now is just focused on what this basketball game means. When you're defending national champion, but you're also preseason number one as a coach, you don't need outside distractions. Right now, Calhoun knows it's over with. Let's play. And Ella means a type of guard to say, come on, guys, we're UConn. Let's get it done. And Jim Calhoun said to us, the fact that Ella is playing in the game means they don't think this is a problem at all. We'll see at halftime. The guys who call the game, though, Brad Nessler and Dick Vitale. All right, John, and they just went through the layup line here. And let me tell you, Elamine is ready to go. He's bouncing around like a pogo stick. Jim Calhoun, though, he's got the defending national champions. He doesn't have Rip Hamilton, who scored 15 for the Wizards last <laughs> night. He's missing another guy that's going to be a big subtraction. Well, you know, the guy I think they're really going to have a tough time replacing is Mr. Ricky Moore. Certainly, when you think about Hamilton, I think they can make up some of his offense with Aju Dang, certainly with Doug Wren, an athlete, Albert Maury, who can shoot the basketball. When I look at this team, Brad, I see depth, I see size, I see power, and I see cockiness. The Muhammad Ali of basketball, <laughs> Colin el baby, and I believe he can back it up. I look for the Huskies to have a great chance to go back-to-back -back like Duke did in 91 and 92. All right, first hurdle, the Iowa Hawkeyes. Steve Alford's coaching debut as the Hawkeyes and Huskies get ready to tip in a moment. ESPN 2's exclusive presentation of NCAA basketball is brought by Cap Top Ranks. Connecticut, the defending champs against the Iowa Hawkeyes. Back of the garden, Jim Calhoun begins defense of that crown. The head man of the Huskies, who was along with John and Digger earlier tonight. Their lineup looks like this. Elamine in the backcourt with Mooring, Freeman, Saunders, and Jake Bosco. The big senior. The enforcer, if you will, on the inside. And for Iowa, and their first-year head coach, Steve Alford. Oliver and Lursman in the backcourt. Henderson, Galloway, and Jacob Jakes down low. Seven points against Connecticut last year in the last meeting between these two teams. Steve Offord, head coach of the Iowa Hawkeyes. You'll see a new look. It'll be not so much zone, a lot of man-to-man, -man, a lot of pressure, and try to push the ball. He's so excited to be back in the Big Ten. And I know he's created a lot of enthusiasm in Iowa. As we said in the first game, we certainly missed Dr. Tom Davis. But they made a choice, and they made a great choice getting Steve Offord. UConn. Goes to work. Elamine's got to track it down out in front. Lursman on him. Elamine had a big game against Iowa in the Western semifinal regional last year. 21 points and couldn't handle them. In low, just up and in. Almost a mistake by Freeman. First score of the new season for the defending champs. I think like Shane Battier, he's going to become a star this year. Inside, Vosco's going to pick up the first foul of the night as he got Jakes over the back. Look at Jake with that beautiful hairstyle. I'm just jealous. I wish I had some hair. <laughs> I like that style. A little 
Sprewell style, little Iverson style. There's the kick down to the inside. Iowa trying to run right out of the gate. They expect a big year out of Jakes, but the thing is this. He's got to stay out of foul trouble. Yeah, he's got to play court. 30 minutes because they're not a very deep basketball team. But the future is so bright that he clean up in the recruiting wars, Mr. Walford. I said they don't have a freshman on their team. First time there, there hasn't been a freshman on the Iowa roster since freshmen became eligible in the 73-74 season. He's changed all that with about four or five guys that made their commitment yesterday. Well, he's got a kid coming in, Glenn Worley from out of Iowa. They think he'll be a star. Jared Reiner, 6'11", coming in from out of South Dakota. They beat out Utah and Kansas for him. Here's Mooring on the run, feeds in the paint. Freeman fouled down low. Lursman, I think, got it. You know, Elamine last year had to step up big when he went on the road and played Stanford. And he came up with the big game, 23 points. And his running partner, who's playing back there with him now, is certainly a kid very capable. Albert Mooring had 15. They had to play without Richard Hamilton, and that was a big win. Nice little jump stop in the lane. Mooring can't connect, though. Here's Oliver touching it for the first time. Lewis can shoot the basketball, Brad. The Jakes squaring off. Hey, got Jake squared inside. Got Jake <laughs> squared going head to head. Galloway's a kid that can shoot the ball from the perimeter as well. Medical red shirt last year, a back problem. Oliver. He's good. our catalyst right here. He's got to have a good game, and he didn't have a good game against UConn last year. Two for ten. Look at Jake. Three Show pointer. Him. Yeah, Shoney could go inside and outside. Oh, no, no, he don't want to start that, telling the crowd to be quiet. Go, no, no, you don't want to talk to trash with this crowd. <laughs> nice defensive play. Oh, come on with a steal. I had that. Good hands, huh, man? Yeah, really you like those hand. hands? Well, yeah, Look at those it. hands, man. <laughs> Picked it off. Those hands, baby. And he tips oh, it out for a one-eyed guy right here. Good reaction. That was your proper eye. Or I you tried to save you because I know you went inside and styled that hair a uh -huh. little halftime. <laughs> Maury from 17. Short. Jake's a rebound. Jacob Jake's a real tenacious guy. They lost so many players from last year's team. Outside jumper on back-to-back threes by Iowa. They that one shoot. from Galloway. Yeah, they can shoot. We said Galloway will provide that shooting ability he's starting they thought we, we thought we'd see rod griffin as the starter from out of junior college but they went with the three-point shooter a late change about a half an hour before tip decided to make that change galloway for griffin and a foul on the other end is going to be on galloway as the kick out you got to square up on these guys runs to the line finds the trifecta galloway can do that so can lorsman Dr. Tom Davis played that zone, trapped all over. You'll see more of a half-court man-to-man defense, as you said earlier, a change in system and style with Iowa. These guys got out with their conditioning early in the season. There were guys hanging their heads over buckets for a while. I mean, outside and get the roll. Rebound off to Saunders. See, right now, they're playing a power lineup with Saunders and certainly Freeman. He said Saunders had a great preseason. He has almost had it stripped away. See, Boring's really their only perimeter shooter from the wing because Freeman's more of a 12, 14 foot player. 15 on the shot clock. Five point Iowa lead here early. They feed it inside to Mooring, trying to go back outside to Saunders. Tipped away nicely by Henderson. And now a hand check on Henderson as Saunders was going by. Jim Calhoun won a year last year, 34 and 2, and the only two losses to Syracuse and to Miami, and in both cases, they did not have their full cast. Leading scorer was Rip Hamilton, who we mentioned in the open at 15 last night for the Washington Wizards, the seventh overall pick in the draft. He's got one thing you can't replace, his shooting touch, mm -hmm. and that's why he'll be a very good NBA player. There's no substitute for guys that can shoot the rock. Duez Henderson's just picked up his second foul in about the last five seconds. A little frustrated, I think, by the earlier call, and comes out, commits that one. He's from out of Michigan, a very quick player, good offensive rebounder. They want him on the floor to play some defense. Nice inbound to Saunders. And a tough catch. The follow's no good. And we might have an over the back on UConn. They're going to call that on Freeman. Kevin Freeman's one of those kids I think is going to be a star this season. Last year, a great role player, but here he is crashing over the back. About a Patterson Catholic High School, played with Tim Thomas in high school. MVP of the Big East Tournament. 
That's being a star. That's, <laughs> that's, that's a pretty star. good. Yeah, that's not bad. Because the Big East last year had three teams in the top ten at the end of the season. They had St. John's and Miami. People have a tendency to forget the great job that Leonard Hamilton did at Miami. UConn is the first Big East team to start a season ranked number one since Syracuse in 87. And here they are as the national champs down by five and trying to defend that crown and that number one ranking. Bosco down low. Ooh, offensive foul. That is two quick ones on him. Johnny Cal with the call. He's working double time. There's a look at Jim Calhoun working that sideline. He didn't waste any time in the first exhibition game. Called a timeout after one minute and three seconds right. because he wasn't happy with their intensity defensively. He's got one up right now because Bosco already got two quick fouls. Here's Jakes, the guy that took that charge. And now Galloway for three. Wow, he can flat out shoot the rock, Brad. We talked about him playing because of his shooting ability. He had 28 threes in his short stint as a freshman before the back injuries last year. As Dick said, he can fire it. Alameen has it stolen away. Here comes Iowa, just running a little bit. Oliver on the run with a layup and the follow. Did Oliver get it or do they give it to Jakes? They give it to Jakes on the offensive tip. Oliver showed superb quickness. He's their catalyst, he's their engine, number 20. Shot two for 10 though against Connecticut last year. Well, Dick, much like the first game, the underdog has a 10-point lead in the early going. Wow. Steve Wolford saying, can it be over? Can it be over? <laughs> Can't we stop now? Can't we go home? And a foul call. This one's going to be on Galloway, his second. But in the opening four minutes, the Iowa Hawkeyes opening some eyes around the country against the number one team in the country. They rattle, rattle out to a 10-point lead inside and outside from their big guy. Wasn't proud to be quiet. Bolt tending on uh, Jacob Jakes on the follow and the miss from Oliver. We get a look from the ESPN above the rim. Ooh, pretty darn close. 12-2. Let's check in with Jake. Brad, while many people expected Steve Alford to play a half-court game against Connecticut, he has done just the opposite with full-court man pressure. And when he has seen the 2-2-1 three-quarter court press from Jim Calhoun, he has told his troops to beat that pressure to score. They have done just that. And it's been interesting because UConn is at its best with Khalid El Amin dominating the ball with the ball in his hands. Alford has charged Dean Oliver with keeping the ball away from El Amin when he gives it up. He doesn't want him to get it back. Brad? El Amin hasn't touched it much. You're right, Jay. And Oliver's the kind of guy that can do that. He's got superb quickness. Here he is. There's the matchup Jay Billis was talking about. Elamine trying to go left and nothing to accomplish down on that baseline. Well, Oliver was really studying him and analyzing him, looking at the VCR at the tape of last year's game. And even that jump shot that he just worked for around a pick was not the prettiest shot in the world. See, right now he's in denial. He's playing him tough. Played him real tough, trying to make him really earn the shot. Got a bad shot out of him right there. Elamine's coming out right now, so is Freeman. Dang checks in. Aju Dang, we finally see Aju Dang. Used to be called Aju Aju. Yeah, he took out Aju. Yeah, they call him the juice. juice. Just juice to his teammates. It's unbelievable. He's traveled all over. A great story on him in Sports Illustrated. A story about his life in Sudan and London. Oliver trying to get the look to Jakes, and he threw it away. See, I think the one thing they have going for him, Connecticut, is going to their bench. He's 6'10", who's got to learn to play at 6'10". The problem is right now, they think he's a little bit passive. He's got to get a little bit more aggressive. Robertson in now playing the point with Alameen on the bench. Tony, a freshman, they're very high up. Here he is as he lobs it down low to Saunders. And Jakes with authority on the boards again for Iowa. You know, Robertson's a combination guard. Somebody's going to give Connecticut a wake-up call. And maybe everybody was dreaming of a Connecticut-Duke matchup might see him at 6.30. <laughs> He'll get a wake-up <laughs> call. Huh? I mean, come on now. That better be a wake-up call right now. A little passive out there, the Huskies. This is where you call the front desk and say, excuse me, but we're down by 10. And UConn with a chance to cut into that 10-point lead. He can shoot now. He can score more. And he can provide some offensive firepower. One wheels missed in and out. Oliver comes out of there with it. Had it stripped from behind. Saunders nice, nice defensive job and he missed the hook. 
They can't find it. Finally, it's tipped in. So uh, not one. I tell you, they told me he has come back a different player. Last year, he played for the Senegalese national team, and he was like eighth or ninth man. This year, this summer, he went down there. He was a star, and they said he really has developed a lot of confidence. He did a good job in the final game against Duke. Gave him some quality defensive minutes. Whew. Hello, Mr. Day. Hello, Mr. Day. Aju's first block. Uh, Aju Dang. Showing his presence defensively. There's one block, and then that one just got swatted into the UConn bench. A little rejection city right here. Get it out of here. A little swat city in the Big Apple. The juice. They call him the juice. Get some juice, says Jim Calhoun. He's out there playing some tight defense on Griffin, who's checked in now. There's Oliver. He committed to Iowa as a sophomore. Griffin, nice look underneath. Block shot this time. By one. Huskies trying to run, and all it nets them is a turnover. You know, when Oliver committed, he also had a commitment out of Ricky Davis, and Ricky Davis left Iowa after his first year to go to the NBA. Romino tried a three-pointer, didn't get it, so the score hasn't changed. Eight-point Iowa advantage. Nice cut. Tried to give and go, and a nice defensive job by Marcelo Gomez. And on the other end is Griffin on the run. They really like Griffin. They think he's going to be a heck of a player. He was a junior college All-American. UConn hurrying and forcing shots right now. And Iowa beat him down the floor. Griffin hey. short. So Iowa, this is not your father's Hawkeye team. <laughs> uh, it work. They're really flying up and down the floor. And In the this lanes. one, Griffin on the run, beats everybody to the hole, yep. and it's a 10-point Iowa lead again. Went to Southeastern Junior College, came out of Ypsilanti, Michigan, Rod Griffin. Second team Juco All-American. Here's Elamine back in there, and he's been so far held in check, hasn't scored. Of course, UConn only has a couple of buckets. I tell you, these Iowa kids are playing very hard, playing with a lot of feeling. And you can see that's been transcended from their guy on the sideline, Mr. Walford. He was the best shooter coming off screens that I witnessed in many a year on a college level. There's some good defensive hustle by Khaled El Amin, and he comes out of there with it. He's got to make a big play to get a spark for this club. Mooring had it stripped by Griffin, so they turn it right back over. That no look ended up as a turnover. Mooring going one-on-one -on -one with Oliver. And he's bumped by Oliver out on top. Tell you one thing about Oliver, he's going to really be tested by point guards when you talk about the Big Ten. You think about Scooney Pan yeah. and certainly Mateen Cleaves when he comes back for the Big Ten action. But Oliver can hold his own with many. I'll tell you one thing, Steve Offord very high on him. He also feels Jakes could possibly play at the next level. And Offord has said that junior season, which Elamine and Oliver both are in is when you have to shine if you want to take it maybe to the next level as a player. What a great job he did at Southwest Missouri State to get him into that Sweet 16, challenge Duke, played Duke very tough. I mean, he got beat by maybe 15, 20 when it was all said and done, but they didn't back down. And there's dad. His dad is an assistant coach, Sam Wolford. What a great story. I remember Cal Ripken telling me that the greatest thrill was to have his dad see him play yeah. so many of his games. And just think about Steve now. He said he's got his dad with him all the time. His dad could share his children. Uh, just a great, great father and son story. 20 years at Newcastle High School. They say after 36 years of coaching, it's the first year he's got a window in his office. <laughs> <laughs> Inside, Gomez with a... First basket for him, and it's a 12-point lead. Gomez getting good position inside, looking for him to be a backup to Jakes. Provides some size, but he gets an easy layup on the interior. Griffin with a steal. They're being out-hustled right now. The Huskies are being out-hustled. And the dish is too far for Thompson. So Team Alford has got Iowa off to a heck of a start as the Hawkeyes lead the top team in the country by a dozen. Start up by 12. This wasn't what he expected, though, playing the number one team in the country. 
But it's probably not ideal. Uh, that's probably why I've had the stomach flu for three days. Uh, but, you know, it's a great opportunity. The three programs that are here with us, UConn, Duke, and Stanford, are three programs that have been consistently in the top ten uh, for the last ten years. And that's what we want to become. 34-year-old head coach. That's Rich Walker talking to him. He's a longtime assistant at Iowa, was on the staff of Dr. Tom Davis, Steve Alford. Kept him on the staff. He knows a little bit about winning programs. As you look at his dad, Sam, having played in that national championship team in 87 with Indiana, when that great shot, acrobatic by Keith Smart on the baseline, beat Syracuse. Right now off to a great start against the defending national champs. 12-point lead. Hell, I mean, they're double-teaming him. Got a shot over Oliver. First basket of the night comes nine minutes into the game, though. Oliver's good quickness beats Elamine. Goes all the way. Beats him, takes him coast to coast. I mean, he looked at him and he said, I'm going right by you, Colin. Mason City, Iowa. Oh, oh, oh. Nice drive on the baseline. By Robertson. His first basket as a Husky. And yeah, they think he'll be a heck of a player. He and Marcus Cox, another freshman. They're very high on. Griffin and Galloway play catch out on top. Oliver works the baseline. Left-handed jump shot. I don't know about that. That shot right there, not good shot selection. And that's something Steve Walford talked to him about. He said it's not that you're a bad shooter because he was down on shooting poorly in one of their all-star games. He said it's shot selection. Yep. That one by Alameen off the mark. Loose ball. Kept alive. By Ding. And now throw away. They're really out of sync right now. Really out of sync. The Richard Hamilton, the All-American, he made big plays and then let him get out of sync. Look at Oliver just blowing right by Elamine. And nobody rotated nope. over. He went one on four and yeah. won the battle. Nobody rotated over. He's got superb quickness. As I said, from out of Mason City, Iowa, was Colmo's Bible player last year. Their only returning starter getting a breather right now on the Hawkeye bench. Nice cut to the paint by Galloway. Missed the jumper, though. Rebound off to Robertson. Nice pass. Look at the run. Dang, nice adjustment in midair. See, he's got good offensive skills. Nice pass by LME. That cuts it down to eight. Dang, really very quick, very agile. He's just got to learn to play on the defensive end. He's got good offensive skills, number four. Lorsman now running the point. With Oliver the on the bench. Louis Louis, there's Louis Louis. Louis Louis can shoot it. He missed everything. That was Louis Louis Louis. <laughs> As you dang in the scorebooks for the first time, uh, all the talk about him. Great dish by Alamine and nice adjustment here in midair. Yeah, good hanging in the air. So ballyhoo. I can't wait to see him play, as I've seen here tonight. But also Frank Williams down here at Illinois, another kid with a lot of publicity. Shea Cotton at Alabama. I've heard so much about these guys. A steal. Good fronting job by Jacob Jakes there. That's the seventh turnover against UConn. Yeah, J.J. did a good job defensively. A good post position. Now he wants the rock inside. Get it to me. And they do. One bounce. A left hand. Three seconds. Lane violation. Yeah, took too long. Says, Good move, though. Made an excellent move. He also went to the Pete Newell's big man camp. Jakes with a nice job fronting his yeah, man defensively. Job. On the baseline. Saunders off the glass. Knocks Jakes down in the process, but no foul call on Jakes, and that I'm sure they're happy about on the Iowa bench. Saunders got a lot of ability. He was Mr. Basketball. Came out of Holy Cross at the Waterbury. Good inside power player. Thompson straight up with it. Rims out. Mooring comes up with a rebound. Here's Robertson. Nice crossover. Leaves it for Deng. He's going to try three. Got it! Hello! Hello! Hello, everybody! My name is Aju Deng! It's Aju Deng! Showing his ability to step outside at 6-10. 9-0 run by UConn to get right back in the thick of this game. And Calhoun wants more pressure. Jimmy C saying, get up and pressure, pressure. Nice look underneath. Excellent.
Excellent play. I tell you, one thing he's got to get out of his bag of tricks, though, is every time he makes a good play, he's going to the crowd. Just play basketball. You don't see the great ones play that kind of game. He's trying to turn down his antics because of all the foul trouble he's had over his stay at Iowa, but that's not going to help his cause with the officials or the fans, for that matter. You know, unless you're Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, you don't do those things. <laughs> right now, he's Jacob Jakes, baby. And just play basketball. Three-pointer doesn't go. Freeman almost kept it alive. Thompson clears it ahead. Griffin trying to scoop to Galloway. Just never found the handle. Seven minutes and seven seconds. Coach talking it over with basketball Aju. Uh, I like that. Basketball Aju, yeah. 20 to 15. Iowa leads UConn right now. Opening night 99. If you missed the opener, as John Saunders says, shame on you. This is how it went. Stanford with a one point lead. Nate James, a chance for 10th ranked Duke to win it in overtime at the buzzer off the front of the iron. And Stanford, the 13th ranked team in the country with an upset. So they'll meet the winner of the one we've got going on right now. Either UConn or Iowa tomorrow night at 9. Coaches versus Cancer Icon Classic Championship right here on ESPN. Summary of this one, Iowa off to a fast start at a 12-point lead, 16 to 4. And there you see the field goal shooting so far on the night. Both teams with seven turnovers. And Iowa three out of six from outside the arc. Connecticut one for four and a one by Aju Deng. Here's Mooring, a little bit short. And Jake's the outlet pass to Galloway. I'll tell you, Jake's has really improved. There's no doubt in my mind he has become a much more effective player. Nice baseline move to get his man in the air by Duez Henderson. And he drew the foul inside from Juan. I'll tell you one thing, that Carver Hook I Arena is a beautiful place up there. And those fans are going to come out big time because I think this edition of Iowa basketball is going to have a hustling, scrappy team that's going to shock some people when they come into Iowa City. Students have been moved closer to the floor to make it a more hostile environment. They painted a good portion of the floor, floor black to give it a more sinister look, if you will. Now, what a great story last year, Dr. Tom Davis taking that team to the Sweet 16, really did a superb job, a great teacher, man of tremendous integrity, and I just hope he gets back on a coaching sideline somewhere. Iowa beat University of Alabama, Birmingham, and Arkansas, and then met their match in this team that's on the floor right now, 78-68 in the West Regional Semifinals to the eventual champion, UConn Huskies. Saunders on his move, a foul called on Jakes before the move and that's Jake's first foul and they'll take that I think with six and a half minutes to go first half exactly the one thing is they got to keep him on the floor they want to get 30 minutes a night Jacob Jake's about every seven minutes or less of foul he led the team with 71 fouls last year but he only fouled out twice so he has found a way to stay on the court but not on the court maybe during a good majority of the basketball game instead of just at crunch time when they put him back in there with four personal. Saunders hits a free throw. They rotated so many bodies last year. They were a much deeper basketball team than right now, but what a future they have with the kid Worley I mentioned earlier, Reiner. I didn't mention even Brody Boyd coming out of Indiana, right. a big-time scorer they signed. 5'10 guard that yeah. can light it. So things, a kid named Scott, Courtney Scott they signed. They're really excited about the future. They had one of the great early recruiting classes. Steve Alford says, you know what, I played 39 minutes when I played, so don't expect to see 11 <laughs> and 12 guys guys out there every night and he loved every minute coming off those screens in the Indiana passing game four-point lead is all now for the Hawkeyes UConn putting a move on Jake squares and off the glass I'll tell you he can really complete the play on the inside I can see why Steve Alford was raving about him before the game a little trap right now needs some help that's a Dr. Tom Davis right there a little half-court trap Maybe got away with a walk, did Cox. And now, offensive foul. Jakes does a nice job of holding his ground. Yeah, last year, he would have probably stepped in and would have caught the second foul. Did a great job, as you said, holding position. Look at Jakes down here. here. They get the ball inside. He turns, faces up, kisses it off the glass, a la John Wooden style. He used to teach down at UCLA. That's picture perfect there. Lead of six. Oliver back out there running the point. Tough shot. Tough shot on that baseline. Yeah, that's a bad shot right there. You don't want that shot. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh, they didn't call a technical, but probably could have come close. Yeah. Not needed. Not needed right there by Jacob. Uh, 
Picks up his second foul. It's a real tough shot, as you said, Brad. Really off balance. I mean, you don't get points with degree of difficulty. Jay, the big fella's fired up there. Well, Brad, you you and Dick referenced that Jacob Jakes is going to have a constant battle all year long of playing hard without fouling. Last season, he was not as valuable to the Iowa team because he was out of the games with foul trouble. And Steve Alford has said he has got to tone down his act this season, and he's got to be able to rely on him for at least 30 minutes a game. About 15 seconds ago, he was close to getting a technical for having that foul call on him and then going up as if to jam it and having it rattle off the back of the rim. And Galloway bumped by Elamine. That'll be the first on Kulit. Here's your ESPN menu for college football Saturday. Chris Kirk and the coach start things off with game day from Blacksburg. He'll talk about that big defense of Virginia Tech. A look at Ron Dane and a lot more than at noon. It's West Virginia, B.C. And at 7.30, Virginia Tech against Miami. The Hokies ranked number two, but number three in the BCS poll. So they'd like to prove something, but that's not going to be easy proof against the Hurricanes. That could be upset city down there, baby. Miami coming in. He just took Jake's out. And he's yep, talking to him. saying, hey, Jake. Yeah, we need you. We need you on the floor. You're going to be our leader. We can't have that immaturity. We can't have that kind of an emotional outburst. You're only going to hurt the team and most of all hurt yourself. Galloway, meanwhile, missed a free throw, and that leaves it open for UConn to cut further into the lead. You know, Jacob came out of Washington Community College after starting his career at South Dakota and transferred and gave him some positive minutes last year, and they're expecting him this year to be a star for them on the interior. Elamine, an air ball on the baseline. Pulled off the backside by Cox, though, and now the ball free, and Iowa comes up with a turnover. Elamine really struggling. I wonder if all that controversy before the game about the car situation hasn't affected him, Brad. That's a good point. And over the back is going to be called on Firmino. For some of the people out there that might not know what we're talking about that just joined us, there are all kinds of possibilities that Elamine may not play today because there was a rumor, there was a report actually, that he had borrowed a car from someone and it was someone that he was leaving tickets for for a game and for games and they were worried about an NCAA possible investigation, but they finally decided, they said, heck, we, he didn't really do anything wrong. The statement that UConn released, by the way, to us said, all student-athlete related matters are dealt with internally at the University of Connecticut to ensure that our institution has fully followed the guidelines mandated by the Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act. Consistent with past practices within our Division of Athletics, we're not at liberty to provide any further comment about the Elamine situation. So that's what we got uh, tonight from UConn. I'll tell you what I got from them. There's no way they would have played him tonight if they thought there was a possibility right. of an NCAA violation. And I just ask, think about everybody. Think about everybody out there that ever went to college. Did you ever borrow a car while you were a student <laughs> from a friend? Never mind an athlete. They said they want these kids to be like students, regular normal students. You borrow a car from someone. You're allowed to leave tickets to someone. I mean, let's make the rules to where you just use common sense. And if you use common sense, I mean, in many cases, kids are indicated that they're guilty. I thought it was supposed to be the other way around, that you're innocent until you're proven guilty. If I had to answer for everything I did wrong in college, I wouldn't be sitting next to you. I'd still be wow. <laughs> wow. locked away somewhere. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Rebound by UConn. They trail by four. We're down to four and a half in the half. Elamine trying to get Oliver in the air, slices through, and he has it stripped away again. Okay. And then a foul to boot. I so was, he is frustrated right now. I was really outplayed him here. There's no question that I was outplayed Connecticut. I think Connecticut's very fortunate to be only four down now with four minutes left and a half. There's the deflection. The nice job away. by Galloway who knocked it away. And then you see Elamine just out of frustration trying to strip it back and picks up a cheap second foul. And he's probably going to sit maybe the rest of the half. I'll tell you one thing, it's a year of a lot of outstanding point guards in college basketball right here in the city. Eric Barkley's a sensational one out at St. John's. You got to love Ed Coder down in North Carolina. Certainly you got to think of Matt Santangelo at Gonzaga. We did a great job last year with that team to beat Stanford in the second round. You got to think, certainly when you talk about great point guards, Scooty Penn down at Ohio State. Mateen Cleaves when he comes back. So it's going to be a year of point guard play. And if you talk about North Carolina, if you missed it earlier, Newby and Coda both reinstated by Coach Guthridge today, so they are back after their 
off-campus problems. I'll tell you, I got a challenge, though, for Jimmy Beheim, who's supposed to be the greatest golfer among the college coaches. Beheim and Alford, I'm going with Alford, oh, man. Boy. I saw him play, and I'm going to tell you, he is unbelievable. Here's Oliver on the break. Couldn't quite, uh, couldn't quite find a handle. Galloway misses a three. Kept alive by Firmino. Blocked out of there by Ding. Firmino out of junior college. Expect him to be a good rebounder. Right now, it's just sloppy both ways. Yeah, really sloppy up and down the floor. You would expect that as much from Connecticut because they have so much more experience than the Alford gang. Here's basketball Aju again. This time his third block shot coming up right there. That is a nice presence to have. Somebody that can block shots on the inside. He's got great quick jumping ability. He can hit the floor and go right back up in a hurry. Marcus Cox picks up his second foul. Oliver will go to the free throw line. Oh, that's my Rolls Royces. Hey, look at that. The Q man. I think he's going to be my player of the year this year. Possible Chris Mim may challenge him down there at Texas. But I love Porter. I love Richardson. Certainly like Scooty Kenyon Penn Martin. you talked about. Yes, Scooty Penn. And Courtney Alexander, Fresno State, I think he's going to have a big year. Two guys I left off could really be in there would be Terrence Morris at Maryland and certainly Chris Mim at Texas. Morris is going to have big time numbers. The other day, he got 34 and 20 in an exhibition game for Maryland. Just under four minutes left in the half. Iowa hits a couple of free throws and they stretch their lead back to seven. A lot of. There he shows the ability to shoot from the outside. Now we work him on the offensive rebound. Now Larry is working on the interior. And now here he's going to step in and take a charge. I mean, he really played well, other than a few minutes of. A little bit of immaturity that he's got to take out of his bag of tricks. There's no reason for it. The kid has got great ability to help this team. He's a much improved player from last year. I just Jake, look at Bosco on the sideline. Jake on the uh, the other side. Jake Bosco with two quick fouls early in this game, and that brought Suleiman Wan and Aju Deng off the bench rather rapidly. Jake Bosco looks like a great surfer down in California, <laughs> doesn't he? A little surf city, baby. I don't know if they got any waves in Katy, Texas, or not. <laughs> Let's check in with Jay. Brad, although Steve Alford has been under the weather with the stomach flu, he is very animated in the huddles, trying to keep up the intensity of his troops. He's very happy with the defense that they've played. They've been very intense, but he wants them to keep up that intensity. He's trying to keep them energized on the sidelines, Brad. Good point. He needs 40 minutes or more. I'll tell you what a job he did last year in beating Tennessee, a team that beat for example, Kentucky, a team that blew out Florida. And the bottom line is they went there and beat them by 30 in the NCAA tournament, Southwest Missouri State. Steve Walford, he becomes contagious to the players around him. They really like him. They enjoy playing for him. You can see it today if they arrived here for the shoot around. You just mentioned my team uh, of either the present or the future in that discussion. Florida. Florida. Look <laughs> yes, out for Florida. Yeah, they're they're my team. I'm not going to say that uh, they'll win it all, but they're going to scare some people along the way. You better believe that those Gators are going to be for real this year. Billy Donovan ball. Shot is short from the outside from Mooring. UConn's field goal shooting about as bad as Duke's was in the first game tonight. They're seven to twenty-six. Oliver delivers a three with Mooring actually hitting his arm as he let go of it. I tell you, Oliver knocking down that three, showing why he was there most. Cole most valuable player last year. A little T.O. right now by Jimmy Calhoun. Ten point lead with 248 remaining in the first half. All Iowa right now. The Hawkeyes by 10. Hustling UConn right now, Dick. Yeah, they really are. They're really playing so passive. Take a look right here. Freeze it. You freeze it right here. Look at this. Nobody pressuring the basketball. Very passive. Nobody coming out. Just laying back. That's not Calhoun basketball. That's not Connecticut basketball. Wide open. See, nobody attacking the shooter. Allowing him to get the good look at the basket. They really got to get a wake-up call at halftime. And I'm going to tell you something. Jim Calhoun will give it to him because this man knows how to motivate, inspire, and win. He's done such a brilliant job at Connecticut. Five of the last six years winning the Big East. Averaging 26 wins per season in the 90s. I tell you, Steve Wolford's got a feel like a million dollars. I don't think he ever dreamt that with two minutes to go and a half, 241, he would be plus 10 on the defending national champ. Well, he's got to feel like at least about 800 grand. I, think. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, he's learned how to dress too. I mean, he's really come a long way from his days down in Bloomington as a jump shooter. 
That hair hasn't moved since he walked on campus in Indiana, I don't think. He used to come off those screens. Boy, did he they used to lay those screens, and he would come off, and it'd be automatic. He beat Dean Oliver, his point guard, in the first three-point shooting contest they had at practice this year. You see the numbers, 24-38 in points, a title in 87, a gold medal in 84. Second all-time to Calvert Cheney as you look at Dean Oliver having a solid first half. Not spectacular, just solid. And they're doing what they're all supposed to do. Galloway makes some threes. Jake score on the inside. Oliver handle the basketball. Everybody take care of their role. Just like here. I let you take care of your role. I mean, John Sanders taking care of his. You take care of our, all our roles. <laughs> I just need a role to have That's something right. to eat. 29-20 <laughs> with two and a half to go as then got the second of two free throws. Here's Oliver found a little crease that closed on him in a hurry. Still got a shot away. And the putback is good by Henderson. Henderson with a good offensive rebound. That's his strength. Got to get back. Freeman underneath drew a foul. Kevin Freeman so quiet in that first half. Rod Thompson picks up the foul. You know, they're starting to believe with every minute going by, they're believing more and more. That shot by Oliver, but there's the conversion by Duez Henderson on the offensive board. React getting back defensively because Connecticut will run that ball right up the court. And it sends Freeman to the free throw line. I think they're making a statement right here, Iowa, that they are definitely going to be a team that's going to scrap and hustle and really enjoy playing in the transition to the new coach and to the new era. And I think that's the statement they're coming out, no matter what happens in this basketball game, because there's so much time left for Connecticut with one of its patented runs to get back in command. Crowd is out of it too now. See, that's the other thing happened to Brad. That crowd is very, very quiet. Freeman with the free throws, cut it down to 10 with two minutes left in the half. Brad Nessler, Dick Vitale, Jay Billis, and coming along, John Saunders oh, yeah. Digger Phelps at halftime. A great opening game. In overtime, Stanford a win over Duke. And by a one. real shocking situation right here. Ball kicked out of there by Saunders. Mike Montgomery, a big win for his team, and he'll be along with John and Digger at halftime to recap that Duke-Stanford game. And they'll play a game of word association. I never play word association with Digger, ever. It doesn't matter if it's at a game or in a restaurant, never. Jim Calhoun beside himself with his team down 10. We've often said a team goes as their point guard goes, and right now Connecticut's point guard, Khaled El Amin, is on the bench. Non-existent is on that sideline right now, and I really believe they feed off his ability. And tonight you haven't seen the real Connecticut team because we haven't seen the real Khaled El Amin. Oliver, meanwhile, the other point guard's and doing his job. Yes, sir. He has been no doubt about it, the best point guard on the floor here tonight. Biggest lead of the night is swelled to 13 now. It's almost a steal there. And now they do step, Dane steps on the, the sideline, turns it over. You know, I haven't seen Connecticut play with such a passive personality as I'm witnessing here tonight. The one thing about Connecticut is they've always locked it up, UConn, and come after you with unbelievable aggressiveness. Tonight, they have been outplayed by the aggressive style of play of Iowa. 1-11. Khalid El Amin not even in the lineup right now. Two fouls. He's one for seven from the floor. He is obviously frustrated as we've talked about tonight. That one way short. He's tried to dibble, uh, dribble through triple teams and has had it stripped several times. Has been he's a got very, as many turnovers as he has points. Has been a very average player. There's no question about it. Tell you what, I don't know if the Connecticut Pride's got a CBA tonight, a CBA game tonight, but Ricky Moore is looking on going, wait a minute, who are these guys wearing the Huskies uniforms? Exactly, because when Ricky Moore was here, I can tell you right now, he would set the tone with his mental tenacity and his defensive ability because he had that unbelievable talent to lock up so many guards, including Mr. Oliver, who last yep. year struggled because of the defense of Moore. Oliver only had five points and four turnovers and only two assists in that game, and already tonight he has ten points to lead Iowa in scoring here in this first half that has but a minute remaining. Here he is with ball in hand. 
Thompson almost took the three. You can understand the shot clock now. Oliver will take the three. Thompson keeps it alive. See, that means they're not hustling. When you're coming up with second shots like that, that means Connecticut's playing very passive. They're waiting for somebody to step up. Boy, and they look over to that bench, and Steve Alford gives them the sign to use some clock. Unless they get a great shot. That wasn't a great shot, but they, they keep it alive again. Now they can play for the final shot That's if they amazing. choose. That's amazing. Three opportunities. That's not UConn basketball. I can tell you that. Griffin. Ten seconds, right. Ten seconds. What a flat first half by the UConn Huskies. That shot partially blocked, and UConn does come out of the pile with it. Now they're looking to run. Mooring. Back outside, stolen by Oliver. He's, He's the man practice. on the run by himself, but he'll lay it in. I'll tell you, Dean Oliver's been a PT peer here in the first half. You got to give an Iowa not an A, and you got to give Connecticut an F here in their performance in the first half. It is a 15-point Iowa lead at halftime. Nothing going right for the defending national champions. And Jay Billis right now is with, I'm sure, an unhappy Jim Calhoun. Jim, offensively, you only put up 21 points in the first half. Can you assess your team performance on the offensive end? Which end you want? Lousy. Both ends lousy. On the defensive end, you seem to be upset with the defensive rotations and rebounding. Well, we're just not playing very well. We're getting our butt handed to us by a team that's really just not working us, and that really shouldn't happen. Uh, we're taking bad shots, compounded by poor rotation to get back on defense, and we're kind of feeling bad for ourselves right about now. What do you say at halftime? A lot of things. Not that you can repeat here. Thanks, Jim. Good luck. Back to you, Brad. Boy, that's the truth. You know that locker room at halftime is not going to be a happy place. That's for sure. A 15-point Iowa lead. They've led from the get-go. ESPN2's exclusive presentation of NCAA Basketball is brought to you by Icon Office Solutions. Proud sponsor of the Coaches vs. Cancer Icon Classic. Iowa by 15 at halftime. <laughs> Brad Nessler and Dick Vitale back with you at Madison Square Garden. I heard John Saunders say the UConn fans were expecting a coronation. Only if you're watching the movie Carrie would this be a coronation for UConn. They have played awful in the first half. They really have. But we got to also credit that to Iowa and the performance by right. Iowa. Certainly they came out offensively. They weren't intimidated. They weren't intimidated. They attacked the basket. They were really, I thought, they got a great performance out of Oliver. On the other side, El Amin was subpar in the first half. And I really believe that sets the tone for everybody else on the floor. When your point guard is not giving you the efficiency that you expect, I'll tell you one thing, the next four minutes is going to tell a lot about this basketball game, Brad, and it's essential for Connecticut to get a spurt right out of this gate. And as John said, 14 turnovers, only one for six outside the arc, 26% from the floor, and Khalid Elamine only two points. Let's check in with Jay. Brad, outside the Iowa locker room, Steve Alford talked to his team about keeping their intensity up. He knows that UConn is the number one team in the country, will come out like a house of fire in the second half, but he does not want his team to approach this game with the mindset of trying not to lose. He wants them to go out with intensity and try to win. Brad? UConn doesn't find some intensity of their own. Their number one ranking will last until next Monday. I'll tell you one thing, there's Lisbon right now. Louis Louis, they isolated him, and he gets a quick deuce right out of the game. Iowa by 17. Here's the key. Here's the catalyst right now. If Connecticut's to come back, number 42's got to really step it up. Colin El Lamine. Here's Vosca, who sat out much of the first half with foul trouble. El Lamine pulls up and was pulled up by Dean Oliver, who picks up his second foul. See, the one thing is they got to get this crowd back as well to give them that emotional lift. But as long as Iowa maintains this lead and stays up on top and avoids the spurt, you can't let Connecticut go on one of their patented spurts. Elamine looking for a kick. He's just going to try to go up against Oliver. And Oliver picks up the second cheap foul in the last 10 seconds. Now he's got three. And that could mean some trouble for Steve Alford, who's looking down that bench right now. Steve Alford. He's going to keep looking at that clock, saying, come on, baby, and move. 
Come on, baby, a move. <laughs> what a lift it would be. You talk about getting credibility out of the game in Iowa. How would that be, making a journey to the big city, playing Connecticut with mostly Connecticut fans here, quieting their crowd, and beating the number one team in America? Only the third point for LME tonight. They're going to go to full court pressure Connecticut and really try to create some turnovers with their traps. For years, their defense has been their offense. Their defense has keyed their offense. You just heard Jim Calhoun yell, let's go. Let's go. That's the old cry of many a coach. Let's go, baby. <laughs> let's go. 15-point lead. I think almost everybody is sitting here, including yours truly, wondering when that spurt is coming. If it's coming. And if it's coming. And a foul on Saunders. That's his first. See, that's where Richard Hamilton was so great. He would knock down two threes in a row, and off they would be off to the races. Oh, sir, Richard, get back in a Husky uniform. <laughs> They picked up the defensive intensity a little bit. You can see that at least. The Huskies. Jake on Jake. Left hand. It went. And he gets the roll inside. I'll tell you, he's effective with his back to the basket. He's got some good post moves inside. He's won the battle over Voskal early here tonight. Jakes has 10. The lead back to 17. Well, Jakes gets the edge over Voskal. Oliver gets the edge over Elamine. And where is Mr. Freeman? Elamine in the paint. He's got it. Can't let him get into that. He makes that curl move and makes that dribble entry into that 15-foot area. He's so effective. Jakes again squares on Bosco this time. Too hard off the glass. And the rebound is Saunders. I'll tell you one area where Iowa has really excelled. Defensive transition. How many opportunities in transition have we seen Connecticut? I don't think they've had any. I can't remember any. I haven't either. Layups in transition. Morey missed a three. They need his, with a rebound. They need his three-point shot. There's Louis Louie. That pass somehow found its way to Jakes underneath. And he finds a way to score inside. See, I think Steve Wolford talked to him, and he's responded in a positive way because we didn't see any quiet the crowd, any antics out of him. Just solid play right there. Two good post moves. 42-25. Well, a lot of people were crying, oh, Connecticut and Duke, what an unbelievable matchup. Unfortunately, it may be at 6.30. <laughs> In consolation round tomorrow night, maybe. Mark Madsen, a hamstring problem is a report we got from the locker room. And uh, we certainly hope that's not severe. Elamine bears he's, another jumper. He's heating it up, and that could be a positive for his teammates. Oliver, this was the guy that was the catalyst in the first half. There's a steal. Freeman. Hello. Maybe that'll give him a little wake-up call. The Husky mascot's going a little bananas now. That cuts it to 13. That's still a big lead, but back-to-back -back hoops. They have not been able to stop Iowa in its execution of its half-court game. Each possession, they're getting the shots they want. Lure's been cut off by Vosco. Now back to Jakes. Wide opens Galloway for he three. Shoot. Didn't get the roll. Jake Vosco up high for the rebound. Here comes UConn. They're going to get Freeman involved. And a bump. Boy, if that's on Oliver, that's four. Yep. Yeah, that's number four, Brad. Oliver's got to go to the sideline. And remember, it was Nolan Richardson, as we see the steal in a jam, he used to say, if you cut off the head of that point guard, and the body will follow. Yes, sir. Yep. So right now, Oliver's going to the sideline. Jay. Brad, when Dean Oliver picked up his third foul, Steve Alford told him that he's got to be smarter than that out on the court. When he turned around to go back to his assistants, he told them, I don't have any choice. I've got to leave him in. Now with Oliver picking up his fourth, he's got to come out. And Brad. Boy, well, that was a cheapie, too. That one a second ago. Trying to work through a pick, and now El Amin, he's going to start dealing. Nine in a hurry for El Amin in this half in the first four minutes. Still double figures. they got to get a stop on a defensive end. They're picking it up a little bit more emotionally now defensively. You can see their slides. 
Jakes has a little bit of trouble against Bosco Griffin's open, and he buries a three. That quiet him down a second. He's a scorer. Came out of Burlington, Burlington Junior College. Morey. Another three on the other end. Here we go. That's Connecticut now. See, Mooring, that's his expertise. Shoot the trifecta. They're looking for him to provide some scoring on the perimeter. Let's see who's going to crack first now. This little bit of a comeback by UConn. Still up double digits, as Dick said. And they hold on to that. As you can feel the intensity of the crowd in this building coming to life. Alameen swipes it away. Clean strip. It's going to be Iowa ball when we come back with 15-18. But UConn back in the hunt courtesy of their point guard. Quiet in the first half. Starting to make some noise now. Mooring his backcourt make. It's a three as well. It's a ten-point ball game. Well, the Khalid was on this guy in the first half. He's opened the hatch in the second half. Nine points of his 11. Three for three in the second half and he has sparked his team back to within 10. Meanwhile Dean Oliver's picked up three quick fouls this half and he has to sit next to Steve Alford and that could leave Alameen even more free. And they're going to call a foul on the inbounds play. Donnie Gray makes a foul call on Albert Mooring. That'll be his first over on the mothership on ESPN. Dan Patrick, Carl Ravitch have Sports Center for you. Following their NC State North Carolina football game, they'll recap Duke and Stanford that we saw tonight. The Knicks lost to the T Wolves as I look up there in the corner, 93 90. They'll look at that and the Vander and Lennox, Holyfield Lewis, will preview that. The way in was today. Jakes, here's a way in underneath. I'll tell you, Jakes is winning the battle inside, Brad. He is dominating the interior people right now for Connecticut, whether it be Bosco, whether, whether it be Juan. He's not too picky on who he's picking on right now. He's just taking everybody apart on the inside. A very unorthodox way, but he's getting it done. Whistle away from the ball. And let's see, it might be Juan and Jake's going at it. No foul call, I don't think. I think Donnie Gray just said, okay, it's enough of that, guys, or somebody's going to go. Well, actually, Juan's going out now. Bosco's coming back in anyway. I thought we had a great visit at halftime from Jess Settles, who played at Iowa, a heck of a player, and great young guy. He's got a book out now called The Next Level coming out. Says he, you're mentioned prominently. Oh, wow. Book. But I, I tell you, it was interesting to hear his comments about his former teammate, Jax. He said, hey, Jakes, he said, we got to really calm him down. We need him on the floor, and he's got to really mature for us. Jess Settles, who played 94 through 96 with Iowa, and then two years of injuries, played last year in 99. And I said to him, it was the first time in 10 years I haven't seen you in one of those uniforms. He says, they don't give you a seventh year to play. He's had so much tough luck throughout oh his career. He was a tough player. Though. Yes, he was. Played very hard early in his career. He's one of the better players in the Big Ten. Unless Connecticut makes something happen with their defense, unless they can form some, force some turnovers and create opportunities for steals, they're going to have a tough night all night long here. Because right now, I was able to execute in their half-court offense, and somehow they got to break that down, and that's been a trademark of Connecticut. Ten points for Elamine this half, 12 for the game. Should be a big year in the Big East. I think Syracuse is going to be outstanding this year. I was teasing earlier about Jimmy Beheim in golf with Steve Alford. But I'll tell you one thing, Beheim can flat out coach. And he's got a team with five starters back. St. John's with Barkley. And certainly with, when you think about Thornton, they're going to have one of the great backcourts in the country. Miami's going to be very good with Bland and Hemsley. Villanova's going to be a solid club. Providence got some new good players. Seton Hall, the future is unbelievable. Maybe had the best recruiting class in America for next year. Alameen went out momentarily. I, don't, I think Jim Calhoun said, don't even sit down. We're going to try to play some defense, get the ball back, and you're going back in. He has not taken a seat. He has been the catalyst of keeping this game within 10. Jake's nice move on the baseline. Left it out there. Long-range shot won't go. Here's the rebound. Robertson bringing it in a hurry. Saunders. Just inside the three-point line, got the drop. Yeah, fortunately for Iowa, he didn't step back. Single Shoot. digits, Dick. Yeah, got it finally down with 13.53, under 10. And a strip, Saunders. And they're going to call a foul on him. Oh, I don't want a technical. Don't want a T here. Don't want a T here. I mean, no, 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 no. Don't want a T. No, 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 no. 
the Jim Calhoun. None called, but it was close. I'll tell you, I give Johnny Cal. He knows the kid was a little frustrated. He could have called the tee there, but he did not. He used some real good patience. That's a sign of good officiating. Remember, John has worked two games tonight because Tim Higgins went out with a calf injury in the first half. So John had worked uh, the entire second half of the first game tonight. Off the glass. No good by Firmino. He had two looks this trip down court and didn't connect on either. And now UConn can make it a six-point game if they score. Oh, they missed Boscoe. He had great post positions inside. You got to go and get the big guy some touches. Bosco wide open. Oh, what a charge. Offensive oh, foul. I have no doubt about that, baby. I like what Jakes did, too. He just took the charge, picked it up, and walked away. Because normally, I would think he would have exploded back. There he is, position. There's no doubt about the charge. Absolutely no doubt. And it was the other Jake going a little bit crazy, almost ripped his jersey off. Thought a soccer game was going to break out on that one for a second. I thought the jersey was going. He's still talking to the officials about that last call. That's three, by the way, on Jake Bosco. See, now trying to go to some full court traps and trying to get them to the trapping areas but they do a great job with spacing and nice ball movement yeah they spread the court really well i mean he he understands basketball there no doubt about it steve Alfred knows basketball jake's on the baseline and it rattle out here's the outlet to elamine on the run and a bump by galloway in route that's three on galloway I've been wrong before. I've been wrong a lot of times. I just don't think that Iowa has enough to hang on and to win this basketball game. That's just my gut feeling. I see right now the body language, and I get the feeling that we're going to see a Connecticut on a spur. I really, I don't know. It's just the feeling I have, Brad. Nice like that, I said, I've been wrong before. It's nice that you said you've been wrong before. That's oh, what separates you from Lee Corso. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> I've been wrong a lot. <laughs> The refs now are trying to get involved and say, guys, we're going to have a whole bunch of fouls, and you're all going to be sitting if you don't keep your cool here a little bit. Pretty good pick by Vosco on the inbounds. Mooring didn't take the three, though. Elamine in traffic. Scoops, and Freeman follows. See, Freeman with the offensive rebound. That means you're starting to play aggressive basketball. I see it picked up in their little bounce they have now. Down to six. Oh boy. That's good. Fourth foul. That's been his history though. He's had a history of getting in foul trouble. Another year, nothing's changed. He looks to the bench, palms yeah. up as if to say, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I tell you, he looks like a surf city to me, man. I'll tell you one thing. I love Jake though. He's a great role player. He's a kid that plays hard, very important to this team. Block shots on the inside, rebound, set screens. Jim Calhoun just gives him a little slap on the way by. The one thing that's impressed me I was the way they've been able to execute their offense. See, right here is the turnover. That's since, Connecticut. Since Oliver is going out, Iowa's game has fallen apart a little bit. Now they got an over and back. Yes, sir. Jody Sylvester right on a call. Jody Sylvester right on a call. The one thing that Steve Walford's kids have been able to do, they have been able to execute their offense. They've been able to get the shots they want. Remember, when Oliver went to the sideline, they were up 42-29. And they put together, as UConn, a run to make it a six-point game now, and they can cut further into that advantage right here. And Brad, that gets back to the theme we talked about earlier, point guard play. This guy steps it up, Connecticut steps it up. Oliver goes out. They have a shutdown. Yes, sir, the Huskies are back, and it's because of the little guy, Mr. Elamine. That's 14, make it 15 for Elamine. And he only had a deuce at halftime. Nice crossover dribble by Griffin, but Elamine almost stripped it from him. And he lays it in. But then that's a big-time score right there. He just went into an isolation move, and he put it on his shoulders, Griffin, and scored. Elamine and check on Lurzman. And that's four on Luresman, and now the entire backcourt for the Hawkeyes with 11.37 to go, looking at foul trouble. 11.37.
remaining in this one. A six point ball game and UConn keeps sneaking back in. The little guys got 15 13 this half to keep the Huskies in the game. Iowa's lead's been cut to six with 1137 left in regulation and courtesy of Khalid El Amin who's put on a show in this second half. Remember Oliver out in foul trouble and El Amin has gone to work on Lursman and whoever else was trying to guard him. 13 points this half 15 for the game and starting to feel it a little bit. Had a slow start. Part of that might have been the problems off the court before this game began. Part of it might have been Dean Oliver playing so well defensively against him. But now Oliver who went out when the score was 42 to 29. And that means that it's been a 14 to 7 push by the defending champs to get back to within six. And I, Oliver still on the bench. I'll tell you, he's sitting on a bench right now. And you think about this Iowa team. They were depleted from last year. Lost seven of their top ten scorers and rebounders. Lost guys like J.R. Koch, Kent McCausland, who had the great jump shot. And they have really come out here with a purpose. And they have scrapped board and been so well coached. Well, it means open again. Got it again. He's on fire, baby. He's on fire. He's now showing why he's rated as one of the premier point guards in America. Three-point ball game. When do you reach the point and you're Mr. Walford? And he steals it. And you get Oliver on the floor, even with four. He'll pull up that one. He pushed a little bit too hard, too fast. And let's see if we got a foul. Nope. I tell you, Steve's in a real tough situation now, Walford, with Oliver out of the game with four fouls. As you look at LME now, drilling the J. When do you reach the point and say, I got to bring him in and I can't worry and wait and wait and wait? Wait too long and it won't matter anyway. They were a different team without that little guy on the floor. That's for sure. Freeman trying to pick up the intensity defensively. Jakes with a hook. Got it. What a big time performance. I'll tell you, he is just dominating inside. Jacob Jakes. I think that's his career high points. 16 on the night. Yeah, 15 was as high at Michigan last year. You're all over it, Mr. Nesta. <laughs> Look at this now. They're going to go to a zone. First time coming out of the man to man. UConn slows down to take a look. Got to attack the gaps. Jim Calhoun said, I would zone us because we haven't shown we can shoot the basketball. Saunders got open from the elbow and missed it. Comes Lursman. Don't forget Sports Center following the North Carolina North Carolina State game on ESPN. Stan and Carl will be along all the scores and highlights, including our first game tonight. And we understand that game is over now. North Carolina beat North Carolina State. Elamine had one rattle out. Carl Torbush needed that win at Chapel Hill. Really struggling down here in football. I'll tell you one thing right now. The great thing that I was done is negate the transition game of Connecticut. Jakes kicks out to Henderson. Probably should have taken the shot. Instead works for that one and missed it badly. Dang out to LME. Freeman's got to get some touches. They're going to get some touches on that baseline to Freeman. I don't know if he's comfortable out there on that wing. LME forces the foul call on Galloway, and he's got four. So every guy that started this ball game that is guard sized if you will for Iowa has four fouls. Yeah all the perimeter people. There's men and certainly Galloway and Oliver now with four. And that's going to bring Griffin back out I'm sure. Galloway will go out Griffin will come in. Griffin slash a scorer. He's going to be a solid player for them. So Mentioning some solid players down in Illinois. Marcus Griffin coming in there. Tremendous junior college superstar along with Frankie Williams and Brian Cook added to the people they got coming back. The Big Ten is going to be dynamite this year. I would rate right now, if I were rating the conferences based on paper, I would say the Big Ten would be Uno number one when you look at Illinois, Ohio State, Michigan State, Indiana, Purdue. I mean, I think that conference is going to be unbelievable. And Michigan, don't count them out. They're going to create problems with some outstanding diaper dandies. Lavelle Blanchard, Kevin Gaines. One thing I like about Brian Ellaby, he has sat there through all the problems that have been in a paper about a booster doing some crazy things. Eddie Martin, who was in the papers and publicized, he's just gone out and recruited, recruited, and done a solid job. Ellaby's got 20 now, and the lead's down to three again. 
defending national champs have scrapped and clawed their way back into this game with Iowa. Iowa led by as many as 17. They're going to get Jake some touches inside. He touches it and gives it right back to Henderson. And he's hit as he passed through the lane. Good things happen when he touches the basketball in that interior. Elamy picks up his third foul. But remember, Khalid has come to life since that guy had to go to the bench right behind his coach, Steve Alford. Is Dean Oliver. And quite a swing since he picked up his fourth foul. UConn's picked up 10 points on this Iowa lead, which is still three with 9.05 left. See, Alford right now, Coach Alford is trying to play the clock and play the score. And as long as he's up on top, he's keeping Oliver out of the game. And he's milking that clock down. As in the single digits, he keeps looking at that clock. Is there enough time? Is there enough time for us to get this W? Henderson, four points on the night. Now five, hits them both. Comes out of a great program out of Michigan. River Rouge, River Rouge. River Rouge has had some great high school basketball teams. Years ago, Lofton Green. What an unbelievable record he had. Jason Price now playing LME. They're trying to double team him. And, and a steal. Nope, not quite. LME got out of the pile with it. And throws one up. Got his own rebound and stayed oh, in. What a play right there. That could be the play of the day right there. That could be a spark they needed. How in the world did the smallest guy in the court catch it in midair off his own miss and put it back in before he landed? And he almost made a bad pass that had the deflection. It would have went up the other way for two. Down to three again. Jakes lost the handle. UConn ball. Freeman shags it in the corner. I think Here's so. the Huskies. Chance to make it a one-point game or tie it up. They score here. He's got to get Oliver on the floor. And timeout. And Donnie Gray talking to Jacob Jakes. Oh, he might be bleeding. That might be an official timeout that's taken. I think that's the problem. Elamine had only two points at halftime. Watch this last shot off a miss of his own. Around the back. There's a little guy getting the offensive rebound and then having the presence to be able to convert it. This is not easy to do, even if you're by yourself in the gym. Exactly. <laughs> I'd say he's worked really hard on his body. Physically, he's in great shape. No more midnight snacks, he says, unless shape. it's fruit. <laughs> Cut down on the fast food. I snuck some midnight snacks last night, and I know I was guilty. Milky Ways, man. I was chewing on those Milky Ways. <laughs> did you have those from Halloween, or did oh. you take those out of the mini bar? Oh, I don't want my wife to find out about me chewing on those Milky Ways. <laughs> so they're working on uh, Jacob Jake's left hand and have it covered, apparently, and uh, he'll be set to check back in. The next moment, he has a chance. Dump it into him. Give it a free bit. Freeman wants it down low without Jakes being in there. And still had it stripped by Henderson, who stepped on the baseline. And then he jumped over the official. Henderson, a good defensive player. And timeout with 7.57 remaining. Iowa clinging now to a three-point lead. Huskies back in it, courtesy of their point guard, who has had some trouble sometimes off the court. He talked with us about his consequences stemming from his misdemeanor possession of marijuana charge last spring. It matured me a lot. It made, made people, uh, I really knew who was behind me, who was, very, who was really there to support me, and I know who the people who wasn't there. But uh, I take uh, uh, um, ownership of that incident. You know, it's behind me now. I'm, very, I'm past it. I'm a better man because of it. And, uh, you know, I'm just ready to look to tackle this season. Community service was the punishment handed out for that offense. What I liked about it was immediately as it happened, he admitted that he was wrong, admitted he made a mistake, he didn't make any alibis, and he simply said, I realize here in Connecticut, there are a lot of kids who look up to me, and I've made a major mistake, and it will not happen again. Hasn't made many mistakes in the second half. He's got 20 points in the half, 22 for the game, and his team is back in it with 7.57 remaining. Inbound, block shot underneath. Foul, no on, foul Jake. on Jakes. That's his third. I think he's got to get Oliver on the floor. I really do. Ben 
Oregon State trying to get back up off the floor after what happened to the Golden with the Golden Gophers last week. They'll take on Michigan at noon Saturday on ABC Sports. Regional action at 3.30 Eastern to follow. Some of you'll see Ron Dane go for the record in rushing. Kansas State, Nebraska, Maryland, Florida State, Washington, UCLA. Check the local listings for the game and time in your area. You know, it's a perfect example. You just mentioned Penn State losing that heartbreak in Minnesota. Eliminated now from any chance to be a national champ in football. Whereas tonight, if Connecticut were to lose this basketball game, the beauty and essence of the college basketball season is the fact that early losses like this will not hurt you in quest of the national title. And that's a whole other can of worms, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, that last foul was on Jake's, uh, was not on Jake's, rather, but on Rod Thompson. So that Look. helps the inside game of Iowa. Let's not open up that can of worms now. <laughs> that sign is with the deuce. What do you think? Time for Oliver? I think it's Oliver time. I think it's Oliver time. I better bring him out before it's too late. Yeah, I think you want to bring him out while you got the lead rather than just falling behind. Ice got some good quickness. Jakes wants it and has it. Defense has improved dramatically for UConn in the second half. Price outside with 12 on the shot clock. Try to penetrate. Dishes on the baseline. Henderson walked with it. Nice job of penetration by Price showing that superb quickness, but they don't get the conversion. See, I think psychologically you don't want Connecticut to get that lead, and I think that Oliver's got to be on the floor. He gets the fifth, he gets the fifth. But well, you got to go and let him beat your best five. He is over there bouncing on his seat. And still it's Lorsman that comes off Steve Alford's bench, not Oliver, when they do have a stoppage in play. If they take the lead right now, this place will explode. UConn's we'll only lead was two to nothing. And oh, missed shot still, UConn ball. Here comes Lorsman back in. I think Steve's got a lot more patience than I would have. Ooh. He's got a great family, too. His wife, Tanya, and his beautiful children, the three of them. He's got his two little guys already hooping it up big time. Says he bought the lot next to him so he can build a gym for his two sons to play basketball growing up. Yeah, he even, build even putting in the new driveway so Hello. they better be level. There it is. Here come the Huskies. Boring hits a three. And they're in front by a deuce for the first time since it was two to nothing. And they picked up their defensive intensity. There's a steal. Oh, to, oh, to get the foul in LB. Oh, the foul in LB. And now he's got four. Look at Jake. Jake's is saying, why not a technical on him? He's pointing to, he's pointing to LME. Maybe that's only three on LME. And I had him for four. And it is three. He's a mini version of Mr. Dane. <laughs> that's right. He's a mini version of Ron Dane. There comes Oliver. I guess his feeling was as soon as they take the lead, I'm going to bring him in. You said that about five minutes ago, and you were right. Come on, call it on him. That's what Jacob Jakes is saying. Missed the free throw. Oh, don't want a foul. Almost had a cheap foul. Reach it in. Tony Robertson goes coast to coast with it. And Tony Robertson, good quickness. Foul's going to be on Griffin. Out of East Providence, Rhode Island. So UConn was down by 17 in this half. Now they lead by two. What a turnaround, courtesy of El Amin. Courtesy of Jim Calhoun's oratory at halftime, I yeah. gotta believe, too. UConn trailing at halftime last year, went 10 and 0. But they never trailed by more than five points. And remember, they were down 15 at the break in this one. So this has been a comeback of monumental proportions. Maybe more than the score itself is how they've changed the way they were playing the first 20. Exactly, Brad. They changed their complexion and their personality. Their personality in the first half was one of very passive, and it really was the aggressive play of Iowa creating a lot of problems as well. Robertson missed the free throw. So the score remains UConn by two with 6.45 remaining in the ball game. We should say remaining, I guess, in regulation. Don't forget, tune in to ESPN2 next Tuesday for preseason NIT action, a doubleheader. 8.30 Eastern, sixth-ranked Ohio State will host Notre Dame. That's the debut of 
New coach Matt Doherty and then at 1030 Kansas State will take on Arizona. And we talked about the fact that Lauren Woods transferred from Wake Forest sat out last year and he's in his new environment next week in that preseason NIT doubleheader 55 53 645 remaining in the ballgame. And you know, you go back, Dick, you mentioned it. You picked out the score. 42-29, key play right here. Yeah, it was when they got that fourth foul. Little cheap foul up on top. They took the catalyst, took the engine out. We talked in the first half, the importance of point guard play. Second half, it's El Amin. First half, it's Oliver, and it reflected in the score. So UConn has dominated since Oliver went out. He's back in there now, but can he do enough to get him back above the water surface? Well. Just his presence, Galloway buries a three. That'll help the cause. Galloway is a known shooter. That's his expertise. Now they're going to try to protect Oliver by going to the zone. Good move by Steve Offer. That kid understands basketball. By the way, he played for his dad in high school. Jody Sylvester is going to take a, an official's timeout. There's some water or ice or something on the court. El Amin slipped on it over there in front of Jim Calhoun. Steve Offer says, come on. Wide open. He's got to rotate out on that shooter. Got to rotate out. And then Jake Shake single in the three, man. He's into the game. Single in the three. I don't know. I feel really old when I look at Steve Wolf. And I can remember him as a uh -huh. freshman at Indiana. And I'm looking at that guy working the sideline as a coach now in his 30s. Is wow, where has the time just flown? 56-55. Alford's team in front by one. He's got three guards on the floor now with Robertson, Boring, and Elamine. I think he's going for a little more perimeter play. Elamine gave up a three, took a tough shot. The follow was missed. Tipped again and finally pulled out of there by Firmino. Firmino came out of junior college with a reputation as being a scrappy rebounder. That's just what he got there. Playing now without Jake's on the floor. That means they're empty in the middle. So they become perimeter oriented. Galloway. On the wing for Mino, they work it over. Lorsman gave up an open shot, worked for a running jumper, and the rebound off to Freeman. See, Connecticut right now should do some damage on the interior with Jake's out of the game. They're going to get some touches inside to Freeman and to Saunders. Freeman way over on the corner. High post to Saunders, they move it around the perimeter. Elamine inside had it partially blocked, followed by Freeman. They're missing in close right now. Yeah, Freeman now and Saunders have come up empty on offensive rebounds in the last two possessions. Nice rebound by Henderson. The no look Lursman to Galloway and he's fouled underneath. These kids from Iowa aren't going away, man. They're just hanging and hanging and hanging. Tony Robertson became another UConn player that was close to a technical on his reaction on that last foul call. It's Oliver kicking the ball up the floor. There's the good diagonal pass. And there's the foul across the arm. So to the free throw line, Kyle Galloway, 6'6 sophomore out of Sioux City, Iowa. This kid, not only a great shooter, he's attending Iowa on a presidential academic scholarship. That's impressive. Yeah, it is. That's 10 points for Galloway. And the lead for Iowa, two now, with just under five minutes to play. Galloway got them both. Let's check in with Jay. Brad, Khalid El Amin has had an outstanding second half, but it's certainly taken a toll on him physically. During those free throws, he was bent over at the waist, really pumping hard. But he is a competitor, and you know he'll come out hard the rest of this game. You know, I thought the very same thing, Jay, when he was down on the other end, when he asked the officials to stop play because he had slipped on some water. I think he was slip slipping on his own sweat maybe a little bit and wanted to breathe it. That is three straight shots in close. The Huskies have missed. Now they'll get a chance to earn something from the free throw line. I'll tell you one thing, they're getting on the offensive boards right now. They're really playing a lot more aggressively. Freeman going to the free throw line. What a kid, Tony Robertson, what a great high school career at St. Andrews. Scored over 2,400 points, very explosive. They feel he's going to become a really dominant player on the perimeter. Kevin Freeman, one of the wooden candidates this year. Nine points tonight, just over 1,100 in his career. Very quiet nine points as yep. well. Knocked down every free throw he's taken. That's four for four. Well, a big question coming down the stretch now. 
Here it is, November 11th in college basketball, and number one on the ropes, baby, on the ropes. It's unbelievable, isn't it? It is really unbelievable. Freeman got them both. And Duke got beaten that first game by Stanford. If you missed that, Stanford over Duke in overtime in game one of the Coaches versus Cancer Icon Classic at the Garden tonight. Brad Nessler, Dick Vitale, Jay Billis, John Saunders, Digger Phelps, and our whole crew here watched a great basketball game to start with, and this one's not too shabby, 58-57. And a foul on Saunders. They're having a tough time inside trying to handle a big fella. He has really stepped up and become a solid post player. And he's given him a lot of minutes as well. Look at him on the inside. He said, well, Bosco tried. He couldn't handle me. Now Saunders is trying. Juan has tried. Very effective. I'll tell you one thing. If you went to Steve Walford last night and you said, Steve, we'll <laughs> I'll give you a four-minute four game. <laughs> yeah. A four-minute game with a point lead. You want to play that instead of 36? You think he would have jumped to that? I think he would have said, I don't feel so sick to my stomach wow. now. He's got a place down in Sarasota, Florida, where I live, so I had a chance to spend some time with him. And he is so excited about that opportunity to coach in the Big Ten. He said, that's where I really want to be, in the Big Ten. And that's where you took your whipping on the golf course, right? Oh, that's no contest, but I take a whipping from everybody. <laughs> I mean, are you kidding me? You beat me is no accomplishment. Uh, is that zone? See the zone protecting Oliver. Good move. Connecticut not showing tonight that they really great from the perimeter. And they went to the zone here with guys in foul trouble. That's making an adjustment as a coach. Boscal on the floor now with four as well. Oliver pulls up 15 footer though. Doesn't go in for him, and out of bounds. 350 remaining. It's a two-point ball game. Another overtime, perhaps? We'll see when we come back. The Big Ten is leading the Big East. 59 to 57 is our score with 350 remaining. Brad Nessler and Dick Vitale back in Madison Square Garden. What a way to start the wow. college basketball season. Gets a little bit earlier every year, but I don't think we could have expected any more than we've seen tonight. You know, we talked about in the preview show that we had, all the guys were together. We talked about balance was going to be the theme this year. And I think tonight is an indicative situation here. There was going to be balance in America. Not the dominance that we saw last year, where Duke and Connecticut were clearly the best teams in America, and Maryland for a great period of time. And if you missed our first game tonight, Stanford with an upset of Duke in overtime and now Iowa trying to do the same to the top ranked team in the land with 350 to play. Connecticut has made a run. Connecticut has even taken a lead. But yet Iowa has not succumbed. They have come back and have gotten back on top again. The Hawkeyes, they're smelling upset. They're ready to jump in joy in Iowa City. Lowersman, that's a huge shot right there. Oh, was that big, baby? Was that big? Only his second field goal. And it makes it a four-point game. Push down low. And the foul is going to be, I think, on Jakes. And it is. Lursman on the inside. We're going to see Rice. Freeze it. Freeze it. Oh, great screen to get him free in the lane. That screen up on top on the elbow. A little turnover right there with the Telestrator. But we saw the idea. He got into the lane. Louie Louie and knocked it down. At the free throw line on the other end, Kevin Freeman hasn't missed one yet tonight, still hasn't. Six straight free throws. Jake's staying out of foul trouble. Yeah, really, staying on the court, and that's important for them. They're really concerned over the years of getting into foul trouble one every six minutes. That's the other thing, if you would have told Steve Alford, we'll let your center have only three fouls with three and a half to play, he would have taken that one, too. Exactly. Connecticut's pressure has not really been a factor. This guy can handle a rock, baby. Mason City, Iowa. Had a sensational first half. 12 points, two rebounds, two assists, and a steal, and then got in early foul trouble in the second half. Oh. Jake's alone. Freeman. He hesitated the right there. He didn't realize how open he was. That's probably the only mistake he's made all night long playing on the inside. Jacob Jakes, he wants to be a star here in the Mecca, baby, right in the Big Apple. There he is operating on the inside. These two teams hooked up last year in the West Regional semifinal. And then Connecticut went on in a tough game, beating Gonzaga, who's going to be outstanding again this year with Richie Fromm and Matt Santangelo. Here's Jakes at the free throw line, 17 points. Two for five. We're now really great on that free throw line. That's a big one. They 
nails that one. It's a career high night for him. If you're just joining us, he's already bettered his career high. Robertson goes out. Dang comes back in. See, Dang, we've heard so much about him, but he's got to get into the flow of the basketball situation. You sit out as long as he has. It's very difficult to come on a floor and be an instant star. Four point lead as Jake's hit two huge free throws. Just over three minutes to play. Each possession now getting bigger and bigger for Connecticut. Well, Jakes and Bosco are banging down low. Bellamine in traffic. Kicks back outside to Mooring. Deng's going to take another three. That's an air ball. Elamine is there to knock it in. Deng says, wait a minute. That was a pass. I yeah. had a great angle, the yeah. great look with my size. Where's Lorenzo Charles when you need him? Lorenzo Charles. 63-61. Loose ball, picked up by UConn. Chance to tie. It's Mailock's time right out of the gate for the UConn Huskies. They're going to get everybody's best hit every time they step on the floor. When you wear that title, it's a national champ. Elamid's got 24. Came up empty on the attempt for oh, number 26. Out of her all by himself oh, now. Nobody back. Nobody rotated back after Elamid penetrated. Freeman hit the deck hard. Elamine was tangled in traffic. The outlet to Oliver, who was all alone. This could be upset city, baby. Now, this is major upset. See, to me, Stanford, no upset with Duke. Basically even, but this is major, major upset. I don't know if Kevin's head hit the deck when he came down on that pileup. I didn't really see it. I, I was watching the outlet pass to Oliver. I missed that one. You think AstroTurf is hard. This floor is not going to give for you. I'll tell you that much. Unless he hits somebody's elbow or knee. We'll take another look. Elamine hanging in the air. There's Kevin Wright in front of your picture. Oh, he got it from that's a friendly fire. Bosco. Bosco got him with the elbow yeah. right in the forehead. Yeah, Bosco gets him right as you said over the forehead as you look number 33. Bang right there. There's the contact. And Jake's elbows are about as hard as the floor. That's getting scary time now for UConn fans. Really scary time. I think people, including yours truly, expect them to make that run. They made that run, but weren't able to hold on to it. And that's a credit to this Iowa team. You know, Jim Calhoun has said all along, you can take all the trips to the White House and the David Letterman shows and the Wrigley Fields. We got to put that behind us. This is a whole new season with a new troop. And you know what? Maybe everybody didn't take him so seriously. But right now, he's in some serious trouble. Down four with 2.11 to go. And you know, everybody steps up a notch against him because of that right. title. Yep. I mean, they become bulletin board uh, fodder for everyone. This is a major, major possession right here in the game. This is a major possession. He can't just do it by himself now. He's got to try to get penetration and get some people involved. Boring. Missed a three and Oliver the rebound. That zone has really created problems. Oliver's going to take it to the hole. Bosco knocked it out of bounds. Yeah, should have taken time off the yeah. clock and backed it out. Didn't have the uh, unmolested layup. Steve Alford just says to Dean Oliver, put both palms down and as if to say, hey, take a breath. You know, you're up four right there. You're in command with less than two minutes on the clock. You back the ball out. NHL tonight follows our basketball. NFL tonight was our in-between game show that uh, Mark and Mike got backed up on because of our overtime in game one. And now we're down to 135. And I would try to work some clock. 14 on the shot clock. And now a minute and a half on the game clock. Lewisman pulls up and got a big one. What an unbelievable shot he trained right there. Louie Louie's going to be the King Louie in Iowa, baby. His nickname Louie. Ryan Lersman. That's Louis the sixth. Wow. As in six points this half. I'll tell you, that zone has really bothered. Great adjustment by Walford to go to the zone with guys in foul trouble, and it's bothered Connecticut. And the other thing is that defensively, they have not been able to force the turnover and get the layup out of the turnover, Connecticut. Louis, 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 the eye. There he is. Got it. He drained that Jay baby off that little screen up remember high. That, remember that big shot he hit at about the four minute mark and we said that's a big yeah. one. That one was bigger. Oh yeah, that's a major, major one. It is major trouble right now for UConn. 
Ryan Lursman, a guy that was a ball boy at Iowa games as a youth, has just put the Hawkeyes a minute nine remaining from an upset. Let's get a report from Jake. Brad, Kevin Freeman just had a butterfly bandage put on his forehead, and he is ready to go back in, and Jim Calhoun will put him into the game as he's running to the scorer's table right now, Brad. I'll tell you, this shows the depth again. We talked about the Big Ten a little bit earlier. A lot of people were really projecting Iowa to be basically near the bottom of the league. I mean, if they're going to be near the bottom, can you imagine what's up on top? Yeah. You think Kevin Freeman's got a butterfly in his head. Think about the butterflies in the UConn fan stomachs right now. It's oh, a five-point game. They were so excited about the start of the season, anticipating such greatness. And I'll tell you, we all did, too. Everybody I've talked to has really anticipated this club, hearing about their new kids, their young people, the kids returning. That's not to say they won't be great, but oh, they might not. be 0-1 here in a minute. Exactly. I mean, that has no indication the kind of year they could still have. But they got to wake up, man, and come to play and not spot people 15 like they did. They need a defensive stop. They play a Mooring. Elamine crossover against Donald with the left hand. He got it. Great move by Elamine right there. And again, it was their defense that made it happen, something that didn't exist here tonight. See, that's been Connecticut basketball. Force the turnover, create transition, get the offensive score. We said they needed a defensive stop. It was even better than a stop. It was in transition, which sent Elamine going the other way 100 miles an hour. See, there it is. They pop the loose ball, kick it out, and this guy knows how to finish. He knows how to finish. He will get you into the end zone, baby. He will get you on the scoreboard. 26 for UConn's fiery point guard. There's no quitting that man. There's no quitting that man. I can guarantee you that. Timeout with 56.4 seconds remaining. UConn back to within a deuce. And remember now, there's those 30-second timeouts this year in college basketball. Remember also, after the 10th foul, you can take the ball out of bounds. Here's a full court heat from the Huskies. Oliver double teamed at midcourt, almost lost it. He split that double team. Horsman, Elamine all over it. Approaching a half minute, Elamine trying to double team and he got caught with his hand in the cookie jar. Yeah, he can't cry on that. There's no doubt about it. You slam that hand in there, they're going to blow that whistle. And he's got four fouls. I mean, watch the double up coming in now. Now we're going to see the double team. As soon as he comes down to double up and reaches in. There's Rich Walker. Jakes has hit his last three free throws and he misses that one. Keeps the door open for Connecticut. Remember, he makes one of these. It's a three-point game. The trifecta. Remember, they had the option of taking the ball out of bounds and have elected to have Jakes go ahead and shoot the free throws. Are they in the bonus right now? They're over to 10. So he missed the first. And let's see if he can give his team a three-point lead with 32 and a half seconds to go. Yep. Mean trying to use every second he can, lets the ball roll all the way near midcourt before he grabs it. We're under a half minute. Who would have ever dreamt this, man? Call your friends now and watch the finish of this baby. Under Number 20. one. Elamine. Warren can shoot the three now. Kicks it down on the baseline. There goes the three off the side. Elamine's got a new life. Ten seconds left in the game. Wow. Got a foul out front. And it's on Oliver, and he's gone. He's gone, but I'll tell you one thing, that is not a bad five. It takes the opportunity for the three-point play out of, the, out of the sink right now, Brad. That's not a bad one. Now let's see if Jim Calhoun wants to shoot free throws or take the ball. I mean, he's right now three points down three with points 7.4 down. seconds to go. And they're both in a bonus over 10 now. And if you're just tuning in and you say, what are those two knuckleheads talking about? <laughs> it's an experimental rule being tested out in these early season games, especially the coaches versus cancer icon classic, in that when there's more than 10 fouls on each team, you have the option when a foul is called, whether it's a shooting foul or a, fall, a foul away from the ball, to shoot the free throws or take the ball out of, out of bounds. And now let's see what Jim Calhoun's decision is going to be. Because remember, as Dick said, it takes 
them away from the situation where they, they can't hit three free throws. So Elamine would be going to the line with a chance for two free throws. I think he's probably going to take the ball out of bounds. Oh, he's got to. I, he's I got there's to. no other choice. There's no other choice. Jay's behind the bench. What are they going to do, Jay? He's got to go for the three and look for Maury. Brad, they've already decided Jim Calhoun has elected to take the ball out of bounds on the side. All right. So the whole game has come down to a three-point shot, which our first game came down to the very same thing. Nate James missed. Didn't need a three-pointer, but that's what he had to take because the time was running out. Last game came down to Duke with a shot at the buzzer to try to win it. Stanford survived. Mike Montgomery 1-0 with his 13th-ranked club with a huge win over Duke. And now here's the defending national champs, ranked number one in the preseason polls, down three, 7.4 seconds left with the ball out of bounds. I think Maureen's the guy. I think a penetration with Elamine and kick it to Maureen. Here's Elamine. Oh, he goes straight up with it. And shoot. it's short. And the ball out of bounds to Iowa. Wow. Wow. The Iowa Hawkeyes, Steve Wolfram, call a timeout. Oh, there's going to be celebration in Iowa City, baby. Elamine had an open look. He was a long way out. What a way to kick off a new regime, Brad. What a way to start your coaching career in a new environment down here in Iowa City. So three seconds remaining. Just about all they have to do is get the ball inbound. And they're probably going to go to a free throw line situation, but three seconds, quite frankly, probably isn't enough time for anything to happen in Connecticut's favor. Now. Well, I think Connecticut, as you said, are really, really in bad, bad shape right now. But they set the tone for this with their early performance, right. very passive. Then they thought they could turn it on and win. You can't just turn it on when you want. But let us not deny the great performance by the kids from Iowa. Absolutely. And I thought where they showed a lot of toughness was when Connecticut caught them, and yet they wouldn't succumb to them. They just hung and hung and hung. So they, we could get ready for Iowa Stanford tomorrow night. Who'd have thunk it? Here's the inbounds play, and maybe a whistle and a foul even before that happens. And there is a foul. So they'll walk Iowa the other way with no time having expired off the clock. That part is good for UConn. The foul was called on Marcus Cox. Well, you're not going to shoot these. Take the ball out of bounds and run the clock out. NHL tonight follows us three seconds from now, barring some sort of miracle by UConn. And they're asking who the foul was on, I believe, is what Steve Offord is asking right now. I thought I saw somebody put up 50, which would be Marcus Cox. I am absolutely stunned, shocked. There's no way in the world I would have thought that Iowa could have come in here at Madison Square Garden in a new regime, losing seven of its top ten players, a new system, take on a veteran team, and beat this Connecticut team. What a salute to the people at Iowa. And Steve and Alford Steve was also asking who was the foul on and who is my shooter. And when he heard it was Lewisman, he says, we're shooting him, baby. And now he feels it. You saw the fist. As if to say, we got this one, guys. It's a it's four point lead with three seconds left. What a way to start your coaching career, and what a way to not start defense of your national title. I'll tell you one thing, Brad. You got a heck of a scoop, baby, if Connecticut can find a way to win this one. <laughs> you got a scoop, a major scoop. The only thing that could happen now is Luresman to miss the free throw. Somebody throw a length of the court pass, take a three pointer, hit the, hit the shot, and be fouled while you were taking it. I got a better chance of growing some here, man. I got a better <laughs> chance of growing some here. I'll tell you one thing, but as we said, what a great moment for Steve Alford. An unbelievable moment and maybe an unbelievable wake-up call for Connecticut that this is a new season and all the memories and all the beautiful moments are great to have, but it's a new year and you got to come to play. Lursman to put a final tack on the bulletin board. Does. One of the reasons he might have shot the ball is only because he is a great shooter, right. but also scared of the steal on the inbounds of the ball. And the three pointer goes with a half second remaining. Freeman hits a three. And everybody that's heading for the 
heading for the gates just sort of stopped and looked up and said, what can you do in point five? Now, who would have ever believed that Connecticut and Duke would be playing at 630? Who would have thought that if planned in this? I like the guy to step forward that could have projected and told me that Connecticut and Duke would play in a consolation. The last three-pointer, Kevin Freeman's first of the night. Academic, my friends, academic. Because as you look at the clock winding down, you can't get a shot on I mean, it's unbelievable. Academic. Look at Steve Walford. You can't tell him it's academic. He said it's not over. It's not over. <laughs> they would have to steal it in midair and throw it up against the glass to have it go in to force overtime. That's about what it would take. Anderson to inbound. And they just go down court to Jakes, who taps it. It's over, and Iowa has upset the top-ranked team in the country to open the 99-2000 basketball season. Steve Alford's debut as a head coach at Iowa, a very successful one, a disappointing night for UConn. The number one team in the country will fall from that ranking, and already they've lost half as many games as they did all of last year. Final score is Iowa 70. And UConn 68 on opening night 99. What an opener for Steve Alford. He's with Jay Billis. Jay? Steve, many people thought you might start this game out just in half court, man, but you really picked up the intensity at the start of the ball game. What were your thoughts going into this game? Well, our kids have worked awfully hard through 21 practices of working on our aggressive pressure, and I didn't want to back off just because we were playing the number one team in the country. We got a long season, and we need to start the way we're going to finish this thing. And Credit goes to the kids. I've been sick for two days, and they've done a great job of concentrating. Oliver picked up his third about 16 minutes left in the second half. You chose to keep him in. Any thoughts about taking him out? Oh, yeah, there were thoughts. He's a, he's a junior. He's stepping into a new role. I wanted to give him that, that credit of being a, a veteran. And uh, it's the first game. He didn't handle that well. He had a heck of a first half. And when he came back with five left, I thought he did a nice job. You spent a lot of time working on your man-to-man -man defense, especially in the half court. But it was the zone in the second half that really helped you out. Well, I saw Digger before the game, and he reminded me I couldn't guard anybody, so I went back to the traditional zone. Steve, congratulations. What does this win mean for your program? Oh, it's terrific. Uh, you're talking about our first game, and to beat the number one team in the country, it, we still got a long way to go, but uh, maybe we're a little better than we thought. Well, a giant step toward that long way you're talking about. Congratulations. Brad, back to you. All right. Well, the flu and the... Symptoms of illness, chicken soup, and all the Theraflu in the world couldn't do what this basketball game did for that young fella tonight. And it's Iowa and Stanford tomorrow night in the Coaches versus Cancer Icon Championship game. You'll see it on ESPN. Coming up next, NHL tonight. And tomorrow at 9, it's that championship game. Again, the final score, 70-68, an upset for Iowa over top-ranked UConn. For John Saunders, Digger Phelps, Jay Billis, and Dick Vitale, I'm Brad Nessler. Good night from Madison Square Garden.